everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my channel. I am here today to celebrate my birthday with you. If you are one of my Patreon patrons watching this and you are watching it the day that it came out, it is actually my birthday today, March 22nd. If you are anyone else and you're watching it the first day, it was my birthday yesterday. And every year around my birthday, I like to do a Q&A. So I went both here on my community tab, also over on Patreon, and also over on my Instagram, and asked you guys what you want to know. So that's what I have for you today. I have answers to all of your fabulous questions. Hopefully I've actually reached all of them. I think there's gonna be time for all of them in this video, and if you have other questions, maybe they've been covered in past Q&As. So, hello Dora. And Dora wants to join in for this video as well, which is, I know, what you guys always want to see anyway, is Lion and Dora. And I even have a couple of questions about Lion and Dora as well. So, let's go ahead and get into it. As I mentioned, that playlist is going to be linked down below if you want to check out more Q&As from past years, because I've basically done, I think, one per year uh, from every year since 2020 when I started this channel. So I've got all of my questions here on my phone, so bear with me while I, you know, read them all off of my phone. I am going to cover my Patreon patrons questions first, and then I'll get into everyone else's questions as well. And some of you, of course, did ask the same question. So I'm not going to name names in here of who asked what just because uh, I don't know necessarily how to pronounce all of your usernames. And also again, some of you asked the same question. So the first question that I got is what's the best advice you would give to someone just getting into historical costuming? I actually have an entire video about that and that's going to be true for a lot of these answers to be honest. I do have a whole video on beginning historical costuming and like how to first get into it. So I will link that video down below in the description and you can check it out up here as well. And then the next question is, I know it took you a while to find the right fabric for Kirsten's meat dress and that the rose coat pink wool was something that I searched for. So the question here is, what is on my mind now that I'm searching for but I just can't find? And likewise, I'm kind of pairing this with another question, which was, if I had an unlimited budget, is there a fabric that I would like to work with or a project I'd like to tackle that I might not otherwise? Because both of these questions actually kind of go together. The main thing that is kind of my, I don't want to say grail that I'm looking for, but definitely something that I am looking for. And the main reason that I'm having trouble finding it is because of cost, is that I would really love to make this bustle gown. I have talked about this one before on this channel. I love this gown so, so much. I think it is just one of the most gorgeous fashion plates that's like ever existed, but it is copious yards of velvet and silk and just like so much fabric and so much expensive fabric. So that is kind of the... I would love to find these and I would love to work with these, but I don't know when that's going to happen because I will need to save up a lot of money to be able to make this dress. And then the next question is, what sparks joy in me regarding my recent or forthcoming sewing projects? Which of all of my costumes makes me the happiest? So right now, of recent projects that I finished, the Kirsten meat dress actually kind of makes me the happiest. I think that I nailed that, like to a T, just 100%, to be honest. I absolutely love how that turned out. It's really fun to wear. We got such great responses at Comic-Con. It was fun to be part of a group. Overall, I just absolutely, absolutely love that cosplay. That is right up there with Felicity as far as like favorites, except that the bonus is it's easy to wear. So it gets even a little bonus ahead of Felicity for that because it's just easy and comfy to wear. As far as upcoming projects, now the next video that you guys are going to get is my upcoming projects video. So I will just say one of these projects, I have kind of mentioned it on this channel from when I first got the fabric, but it's going to be this sort of bustle dress in some yellow and blue check plaid silk that I got from Burnley and Trowbridge. That's probably the one that I'm most looking forward to on my to-do list. And then the next question, are there any previous projects that I revisit or recreate if time or supply costs weren't an issue? Now, I don't think that this was really an issue with time or supply costs, to be honest. Maybe supply a little bit because I did make my skirt panels straight instead of circular, which I really should have done. But honestly, the one project that I can think of that I truly am just not happy with and I think I might recreate someday is my Mary Poppins Jolly Holiday dress. The silhouette wasn't great. Part of that was the skirt problem. And then the other part was that after just a couple of wearings, the whole thing started to fall apart. 
and it was made out of silk organza so like we're not talking like super cheap materials or anything and then it had like appliques on it and I don't know it just wasn't quite right and that is one that I think I would like to revisit someday and make better. Next question, what's one thing you want to do different this coming year, if anything? To be honest, I want to be kinder to myself. I have been very much towing the edge of burnout for a very, very, very long time at this point. Like, to be honest, I could not tell you the last time that I did not feel on the edge of burnout. It's been at least a few years. And I would like to not do that. So yeah, I need to be kinder to myself, whether that is with like projects, deadlines, theater stuff, work, etc. I need to be kinder with myself. Next question is, what got you into sewing? If you could tell yourself something when you first started sewing, what would you say? So to be honest, I'm not sure what made me first decide to like pick up fabric and sew. I guess I had kind of always maybe been interested in it a little because I did make little things for like American Girls and Barbie that didn't really involve sewing, but involved like careful pinning or like, you know, sticky Velcro or things like that. Um, so, I'm not really sure what first made me decide, nope, it's time to actually sew now, but that was in high school, I think going into my senior year of high school. And I think it was the idea of making some costumes for myself. One of the very first things that I made was a Harry Potter uniform and like the robe and the skirt is what I made. And then the, I think the third project that I ever made was a Renaissance gown out of crushed velvet, like stretch velvet. And although I did learn fairly quickly, especially with those first few projects, the main thing that I wish that I would have known was A, do a mock-up, that's a good idea, and B, kind of going off of that is you don't have to follow a pattern like to the letter, like you can make things larger, smaller, etc. You don't have to follow the instructions because those first few projects I just cut the pattern piece and sewed it together. <laughs> I got a really fun question from Kiralee Cosplay, which I know is a silly question. She probably didn't expect me to answer on this video, but she said, are you looking forward to two Aussies crashing at yours? Yes, 100%. Uh, Kiralee and her husband Terry are coming to stay with me in a few weeks. I am so, so looking forward to them coming. So I'm sure that we will do some sort of silliness that will turn into, you know, a video or two while they're here. They're here for uh, about five days, I think. And I'm so, so looking forward to seeing them again. So I got a few questions from the same person and uh, they're all on various topics, but first one is dream musical role to play. My number one dream role at this point that I haven't played already is Mrs. Lovett and Sweeney Todd. So keep your fingers crossed for me. I would so love to play Mrs. Lovett. Next up, if I could live in any other time period, what would it be? To be honest, I wouldn't want to live in any other time period. I kind of like now, I think, you know, I, I like our technology. I like our conveniences, etc. Obviously, we don't have everything great, but I think that things are getting better for like minorities and for women and for like LGBTQ+. I think that now is a better time than pretty much really any other time in history. So I like living in the now. And lastly, what is my favorite historical show? So right now, TV show wise, as far as current shows, at least, it's definitely The Gilded Age. Love The Gilded Age. Cannot wait for season three. I was next asked, how tall am I? I looked so tall in my American Girl Outfit collab at Costume College. Yeah, I don't know why everyone else decided to be so short in that. I am tall, I'm 5'10", but literally I was like a full head taller than everyone else in that group, which was a little bit silly feeling. I got a very cute question, which was, how did I get to be so talented? Honestly, lots of practice. It takes a lot of practice to do all of this, whether you're talking about like theater, singing, sewing, etc. That's a lot of practice. I've been doing it for a long time. Then most comfortable era of clothes to wear, such as underlayers, skirt craziness, etc. To be honest, kind of what I wear nowadays is, in my opinion, the most comfortable, kind of like a, a 50s inspired look, but taking modern, comfy, etc. Um, but if we're talking about historical costuming, I would probably say bustle, um, especially a bustle that doesn't have a train. They're comfier corsets. You don't have to worry about hoops necessarily, but you still get the fun skirts. So yeah, I love the bustle period. Such a great era. 
A few people asked what got me started in period and costume sewing. So I started going to Ren Fairs when I was in college and then from there I found out on the internet that other people did other types of costuming. Um, but honestly as far as my initial interest in historical fashion, I credit that to American Girl. And I have actually covered these sorts of topics in other videos so I will link those down below in the description. What has been my favorite role in a play or musical? To be honest, it was probably the Baroness in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. I had such a blast with that role. It was just complete silliness all the way. It wasn't too serious. I didn't have to think about too much, but I got a really fun dance number and I got to like improv with my scene partner, the Baron. It was just so much fun. What is my most favorite costume that I've made since I started sewing? I think it's my child Victorian dress, this one right here. I still like when I look at pictures of it I still kind of can't believe that I made that it was a lot a lot of hand sewing and all of that decoration and I am very proud of all of the work that I did into it I think it was just spot on from the original dress and it's also very fun to wear and my battery died so to continue on the next question is what is my next big sewing project so again I will be talking more about this in the next video but my next big sewing project is actually an 1890s gown for the Victorian festival in Port Townsend am I into reading and if so what kinds of books I do enjoy reading I don't get a ton of time for it but I always try to give myself at least like 10 to 15 minutes per night if not more to read um, my favorites are mysteries and lately in particular I've been so into the books by Kathleen Ernst I think her mysteries are so so good and I just finished the most recent one that she wrote so now I have to wait for the next one to come out sometime this year but her books are so good she's got the Chloe Ellison series which is I think like 13 books or something like that so far it's pretty long and then there's also the Hanukkah Bauer series that's the one that I just read those two books and there's going to be more coming they're both such good series highly recommend what is my favorite kind of dessert or delicious treat ice cream I love ice cream I could eat ice cream like every day honestly um it just brings me joy and comfort any acting advice I am not the best at giving like acting advice but to be honest I feel like the thing that comes to mind first is to not overthink things. When I got my BFA in acting a lot of it a lot of what I was trained to do was like to analyze beats and to break everything down and all of this sort of stuff and it's like I disagree. <laughs> I honestly I think that you should get to know your character and that will kind of motivate everything else. How many acting roles do I get per year on average? Uh, right now I've been doing about three to four shows per year. At one point I did like seven in a year, which is insane to think about now. Um, but three to four is more than plenty, I'd say at this point. Will Dora and Lion be getting their own channel? Love those floofs. I love them too. No, they will not be getting their own channel. I think they do quite enough of, uh, you know, impact on this channel. Dora is now making all sorts of noise behind the camera. So if you hear a small bell ringing, that is her just shaking her collar all over behind the camera. Uh, but yeah, they're not going to get their own channel. And then what are some of my favorite period slash costume dramas, stage and or screen, and why? I actually have a whole video about my, I think it was top 10 favorite movies. So I will link that one down below. Um, and again, currently TV wise, it would be The Gilded Age. Would I ever consider hand sewing an entire gown and accoutrement to get a taste of what it was like for seamstresses in the past? No, not really. I mean, I started actually a hand sewn 1860s gown in a class in costume college several years ago, nearly a decade ago, I think at this point. Um, but I just can't bring myself to finish it unless I like actually hand sew the rest of it because, you know, I'm, I don't know, a third of the way done or something at this point. And um, I just don't really have the time or the patience to finish that. So that's going to sit in my unfinished projects pile with honestly, the only other unfinished project I think I have is a, like a vintage style blouse that I had started for a Disney trip one year and then never finished. I think those are my only UFOs. What are my top three favorite eras for fashion? Uh, I would say the 1870s and the 1830s for sure. And then if we're talking historical fashion, the 1900s, I really like that silhouette. And if we're talking slightly more modern, I'd go with the 1950s. 
tips for making gathers less painful to sew. I love how gathering looks. It's always just very stressful to get them to stay even while I'm actually gathering the piece and then again when I'm trying to sew it into a seam. So I do tend to do all of my gathering by running like stitches with a long stitch length and pulling them up. You can of course use a ruffler foot which the math isn't quite there. I prefer to get like those even gathers and know how much I need, etc. cetera. Uh, but a ruffler foot would obviously be the easiest way. However, the way that I do it, I just divide up the thing that I am gathering and the thing that I'm gathering to. I usually divide it by eighths, sometimes sixteenths, sometimes even more, because you want to take small chunks and basically you want to match up your lines for like every, you know, the one eighth of the piece. So you would match up all those lines and then you would pull up the threads for the bits in between. And you want to basically not have to match lines farther apart than about like eight, maybe 10 inches max. What are your top tips for a plus sized sewist? I actually have a whole video on plus size sewing, so I will link that down below. In fact, I have a specific video on plus size historical costuming, and then I have an entire playlist about kind of plus size sewing tips in general, each of the videos in that playlist. So definitely go check that out. Again, I will link that down in the description. What is my least favorite part about sewing? Cutting and mock-ups. I don't like cutting and I don't love mock-ups. It just takes up so much time. Uh, so yeah, that's my least favorite part. The favorite part was also asked, and that to me I think is when things are really coming together, like you're starting to add the embellishments, the closures, etc. Um, when you're kind of nearing that end and you can really see the final look, that's my favorite. Is there a historical era that I have not made clothing in yet, but I would like to? The only era that I can think of is probably the Mantua era. That's like the 17 teens. I haven't done anything there. That said, nobody does events in that era in the US, so I don't see myself doing anything from that era, but that's pretty much the only thing that I haven't touched. If I could have the wardrobe of any fictional character, who would it be? Um, to be honest, I, I'm not sure, but my guess is, just based on the cosplays that I have done, it would be a toss-up or a tie between Rose from Titanic and Kirsten Larson, because those are the cosplays that I've done the most of, I think. So I suppose those make sense. Do I ever get in a sewing funk and don't want to make anything? And if so, what do you do to get started again? Seasonal changes throw me off because I have so many ideas and then I can't pick one to start. You guys, I get in a sewing funk like that all the freaking time. And it is you guys that keep me going. A lot of times it'll be like, well, I have to sew because otherwise I don't have a video. And if I don't have a video, then like what happens on a Tuesday, you know, when there's no video out? So yeah, that's why occasionally you will see like a, a filler type video, like next week, for example. I didn't get enough sewing done one week recently. And so I combined two weeks into one video. So you get like the filler plans video next week and then the sewing video the following week. So occasionally it does happen. But generally speaking, I sew because I make videos. <laughs> Are there any fandoms that I haven't done a look from but would love to? Um, not off the top of my head, just because I don't feel like I know many fandoms, but that's kind of why I always seem to do cosplays that are like historical based like movie characters or like Disney, American Girl, Barbie, etc. That's kind of my, my genre. <laughs> Am I going to costume college this year? I am! I'm very, very excited for it and I'm going to be teaching my photography class again. Do I only do musicals or do I do plays as well? I mostly do musicals. Every so often I will do a play. It doesn't happen very often just because I enjoy musicals more. What is my favorite birthday memory? I think my favorite recent birthday actually was just a couple of years ago when Emily, the sucky seamstress, and I, uh, we hung out in Regency dresses like in Cherry Blossoms in this one park and then we came back to my house and my friend Rachel joined us and we all had this lovely tea. That was a really really nice birthday. Do I have any upcoming plans for pre 18th century makes? There is a very slight chance that I might make myself a new Elizabethan kirtle this summer for Ren Faire. Um, but that's often, honestly a very slim chance, so probably not. Would I ever make Giselle's dress from Enchanted or Sarah's dress from The Labyrinth? I love Giselle's dress. I think that is such a beautiful poofy ball gown, though to be honest I love her curtain dress probably more. Um, so it's a possibility. It's not on my list like of plans, but it's a possibility. Um, I've never actually seen Labyrinth, so no to that one. <laughs> 
You guys were asking for an update about Dora. How is she doing? She is, as you could see from the video here, she's out of her cone. She's been out for a couple of weeks now and she is healing and doing very well. On the other hand, I will have some news for you about Lion in an upcoming video because I filmed that before I filmed this. So um, you will just have to wait for that then. What are my favorite accessories in my collection? Tiaras, gloves, necklaces, bags, etc. I want show and tell. I brought a couple things of show and tell. This is my favorite tiara. This is from AliExpress. I think it is so, so pretty. And then my favorite gloves are the ones from Regency Marketplace because they are so nice and long and size inclusive, fit big arms. Um, this is probably my favorite bag just because I use it so much. But looking at it now, it is, it's either completely filthy or it's totally faded. But I did all this embroidery on my machine and I think it's quite nice and it holds a lot. I also love giant hats. Not sewing related, but do you have a favorite animal species that you could picture yourself as? In the past, I've always thought of myself as a poodle, but to be honest, I think I am probably Dora. Um, basically, she needs like love and attention and snuggles when she wants it. And then other times she's fiercely independent and sometimes she can go a little crazy, but usually she's pretty chill. Um, so yeah, I think I'm Dora. How old am I? I'm turning 36. Happy birthday, 1988 babies. What dress would I ever not want to make again? <laughs> um, a lot, honestly. Probably most of the dresses that I've made, like I wouldn't want to make another one of them. In fact, the only thing that I can think of that I want to make one of, and I really should be putting this on my cosplay list, is I made a commission once of like Anna's main original outfit, and I really want to make one for myself, and I just never have. So that's the only thing that I can think of that I would literally want to make like that same dress. Who is your favorite American Girl doll and who is your favorite doll to sew for? So Samantha is always going to have a special place in my heart just because she was my first doll. So she is probably still my favorite. <laughs> Though Kit has totally grown on me. Like Kit's collection is awesome. Her furniture, her amazing freaking roll top desk. So yeah, she is very cool. Um, and I'm, frankly, I've only actually made, I think, three outfits for the dolls. And really, they're all for Yvette, because Yvette I had bought, like, with intending her to be sort of my own historical doll. 1830s, if you will, but not really. So, for Yvette. What advice would you give to those who are getting into helping with costuming for theater and to go along with that? Do I have any tips for costuming on a budget? And this is the last question, by the way. So, honestly, I don't really costume for theater. <laughs> I only do costuming type stuff for theater if it's a union house and in that case I usually stitch or dress but yeah I, I don't really costume for theater but if you're doing costuming for theater particularly on a like smaller level like community theater make friends with all of the other costumers around make friends with all the other theaters around so that you can pull from their stock of costumes when you're going to go costume a show. Um, and then as far as doing costuming on a budget, I actually have an entire video about that. So I will link that right up here and also down below in the description. But that is all of the questions that I got this year. Again, I have answered a whole lot of questions in the past. I think I may have done some of those in past videos too, but you know, it's been a while. So again, check out the playlist of all of the different Q&A videos linked down in the description. But yeah, that is going to be it for me. I am going to go off and see a show now with Emily because it was her birthday a few days ago as well. And then I'm just going to have a lovely birthday weekend and also, you know, edit and post this video for you all. But hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week, usually with sewing vlogs out on Tuesdays and sometimes with additional bonus content like this out on Saturdays. But I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashion. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, or if you want to send a little birthday treat my way, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks or join my YouTube channel memberships right here on YouTube below the video. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Jean and Dan. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!